Jesus. Praise the Lord God Almighty. I'm going to magnify the Lord today. If he's been good to you, I'm going to give him praise. Worthy is the Lamb of God. <clears throat> he was slain for the foundations of the world. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. There's no God like Jehovah. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending. We have to bless the Lord at all times to let his praises continually be in our mouth. Because if you want God to bless you, you need to bless him with your praise. The only way God can bless you is to be obedient and give him what he's looking for. And that's your praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get started in just a moment. I pray everyone had a great day and that you're resting, enjoying this evening. The weather's beautiful. It rained quite a bit here in Milwaukee. But rain doesn't stop the Lord from doing what He's doing in our lives. We stop Him from doing things in our lives by our act of disobedience. So we got to continue to trust God in His Word and stand fast in liberty. For Christ has made us free. Amen. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer in just a moment. So I pray that you are in excited about Jesus today. And that you stand in front of the faith of our Lord and Savior for who he is, the living word. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. St. John chapter 1, verse 14. And that is so true. The Word of God became flesh when Jesus Christ came into the world in human form to be the Lord and Savior of the world. He brought us redemption. He brought us life through His own shedding of His blood on the cross of Calvary that we have the right and the privileges to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and help in a time of need. Come on, bless the Lord in here today. Let's magnify his name for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. If you know God has been good to you, you ought to bless him. You ought to praise him. You ought to exalt the Lord our God. Worship him because he's worthy of the praise, the glory, and the honor. Hallelujah. So gracious God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have created. We thank you for this moment, this opportunity, God. To share your word tonight, oh God, I thank you for bringing us through this day. I ask right now, oh God, that you move the business of the day from our minds and our hearts. That we have a clear conscience and a focus to hear from you, God. Let your word minister to our hearts tonight, oh God. Bring conviction, bring change in our lives for the better. As we come to realize the sin issues that we've been dealing with and have called strongholds, fortresses in our mindsets that you would purge it out of us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you. As we receive your grace, we receive salvation. Because through grace, we are saved by faith, and that now of ourselves is the gift of God. And we thank you, Lord God, for caring enough for us to give us this gift that we can receive freely, Father, with no strings attached. But we receive it as surrendering ourselves to your Lordship, your authority, and accepting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And God bless you, uh, Dennis. Bless you, brother. Amen. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Hopefully others will come on. If not, we're going to proceed anyway. We're going to proceed anyway. Because um, our lessons have really been inspirational, encouraging, and enriching, and empowering to help us realize how Jezebel, that spirit, has been controlling our minds for through strongholds. And those strongholds are fortresses that imprison you in your mindset in a state of rebellion. And it keeps you from surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ and allowing him to cleanse you from all sin. Because there's some sins in our lives we hold on to. There's some sins we let go of because we know the things that we're addicted to. We know the things that hold us in captivity and we know what we're willing to let go of. But so many times we get stuck in a fortress because of certain strongholds we refuse to let go of. It might be lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, might be drinking, might be drugs, might be uh, um, uh, fornication, adultery, might be lying, might be stealing, whatever it is that's in your heart 
that's not right with God, you know yourself better than you than God. Then God knows you better. You know yourself, but you know yourself also the way God knows you. That's what I'm trying to say because we we know God knows our heart. He said it in Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart of, of, of man is wicked. He says in his word, we have wicked hearts without Christ. He said desperately wicked. That means your desires, your passions, your hunger, your thirst is for wickedness. And God is trying to break that spirit off of our minds that we will pay attention and not be victimized by the enemy. Amen. Good evening, Pastor Denise. God bless you. So we're going to get into our lesson. I'm going to put it on the screen in just a moment. I get things set up here where it needs to be. But we're in chapter 5 tonight. We're going back to our book again. Breaking the threefold demonic cord of Jezebel. So how to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel after Leah and Delilah. So tonight, we, we done finished discussing last week about Jezebel. So tonight, our study going to be about after Leah's reign of terror. So now we're dealing with the daughter. Because this spirit of strongholds are ancestry spirits. And what I mean by that is transferred from one generation to the next generation. And you have to recognize that spirit when it comes to violate your life, your present existence. You have to know when it's being influenced and controlled by a demonic force of the enemy. The enemy has many idols, and there are thousands of idols that people worship around the world. And you have to recognize what is it that's ancestry. It might be incest. It might be rape. might be murder. It might be stealing. It might be killing. might be all kinds of stuff that people have done in the past in your generation. Those spirits will transfer to the next generation and get into those children of the next generation. So what's in you gets into your children. What's in your children gets into their children when they have children. You have to identify what spirit I'm dealing with because every spirit is not the same. But they all are controlled by one person in the spirit. It's an enemy. And the enemy controls everything that he has to keep you in a state of gloom and doom and destruction. So you have to wake up and pay attention. I say it all the time, wake up and pay attention because I ever say the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who may devour. And he's looking for someone who's not prayed up, who's not paying attention, someone who's bound in iniquity and sin, one who's who have not surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He's looking for that type of person who just really don't care. You hear what I just said? There are people who know they have certain issues in their life that God can deliver them from, but in their minds and their hearts, they really just do not care. You hear that? So pay attention tonight. After Leah is a very strong spirit like her mother, and she's one who wanted to be in position of a leader so bad to so even had her own child killed. That's how dangerous she is. You thought Jezebel was bad. She's just as bad as her mother because the same spirit dwells in her. So we got to get in ourselves the word of God, allow the word of God to really change our thought life, change our attitude, change everything about us, become more and more like God wants to be, that we can learn how to discern and deal with these ancestry spirits when they rise up in our lives. Amen. So I'm about to put it on the screen in just a second. All right. In 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 3, when you find that scripture, look it up. Because it's dealing with after Leah's desire to become king. She wanted the lordship. She wanted the rule. She wanted people to submit to her authority. 
we have to really listen to the voice of God when God begins to speak because our adversary is not playing games with us. And it says, Athaliah awoke early after tossing and turning all night. You hear that? She tossed and turned all night, worried and concerned about how she can plot and plan for the demise of the, the king who's in, the, in authority, that she can get that position for herself. That's how bad she wanted it. She couldn't even rest because she wanted it so bad. So 2 Kings, my, 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 chapter 11. Let's go to the scriptures right now. 2 Kings, chapter 11, verse 3. Okay, 2 Kings chapter 11. If you got a Bible, follow along with me. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the seed royal. In other words, everyone that was in the bloodline of royalty, she had to get rid of it. So, Jehosheba, the daughter of the king, Jeram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons who were slain. You hear that? Listen to this. This, this is good. So, she was a bad bully. She slain all the royal seed, which means all the babies. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber of Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord six years. Ain't that something? And Athaliah reigned over the land. And the seventh year, Jehoiada, or Jehoiada sent and set the rulers over hundreds with captain, with the captains and the guards and brought them to him into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them and took an oath from them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. And he commanded them saying, this is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you that enter into Enter in on the Sabbath, shall be the keeper of the watch of the king's house. And the third part of you shall be at the gate of Shur, and the third part at the gate behind the guard. So, so shall you keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. And the two parts of all that goes forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep watch of the house of the Lord about the king. So they're talking about this baby, the king's baby, who, who was who was hidden. And ye shall compass the king round, round about every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh with in ranges, let him be slain. And be with the king as he goeth out and cometh in. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all the things that Jeho Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men who were were to come on the Sabbath with those who should go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada, the priest, and, and to the captains over hundreds of priests, King David's spear and shield that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard, listen to this, and the guard stood and every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left of the corner of the temple along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put a crown upon him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, God save the king. So this is the next king that took place 
after as Ahiah saw his son was dead. So because his son was dead, they had to have another king to take his place. And that king happened to be the son of Azariah. It says, after Leah the mother, Azariah saw his son was dead. So, so it goes on, with, you know, letting us know what took place in order to become this king to rule over Israel. But if you go to 2 Kings chapter 9, you find out that God called a man named Jehu and made him the next king over Israel. And Elijah gave him a prophetic word about the destruction and demise of Jezebel. And every word that God has spoken through his prophets is the very thing that came to pass. That she was going to be put to death that she was going to be tossed from a window. The dog's going to lick her blood. And if you read the story in chapter 9, you'll find out that because she was still the queen, they wanted to give her a kingly burial. But because of the way God had, had spoken destruction over her, there was nothing left save the palm of a hand and the skull. So they couldn't even give her a proper burial. So they take the remains and throw it in a heap somewhere else. So, after they awoke early, after tossing and turning all night, it seemed the best thing to do, the best thing was to go ahead and get up. <coughs> she made her way to her dressing table. Only a slight glimmer of sunlight brightened her hand-held mirror. Oh, great. I can't even put on my colors. After Leah scrawled, not the least bit concerned that she would awaken her handmaiden, she continued to complain. Mother always knew how to, took to look her best. Mother always knew how to look her best, even early in the morning. She could turn the head of any man on whom she set her sight, except for the prophet, that prophet guy. She's talking about Elijah. Well, I would just have to chance it and go out looking as though I just got out of bed. Maybe no one would notice me this early in the morning. I have too much on my mind to be concerned about how I look. So this is where it all begins. Was she in her mind plotting and planning for the demise of the king? After Leah slowly and carefully made her way to the courtyard, being extremely careful not to be seen, she opened the door to the courtroom quietly and stood for a moment gazing at the king's throne. She began once more to recall that stupendous day when her husband was established as king of Judah. She had served on the throne for eight years. He had served on the throne for eight years, and now he was dead. Their son, Azariah, was now the king of Judah. Oh, what I have, she said, oh, what have I accomplished? Just like my mother Jezebel, I have influenced an entire nation. I brought my gods with me, and I have set them in every high place. I am highly favored by the gods as they are worshipped daily in the temple of Judah. The same thing her mother was doing is the same thing that's taking place right here with the idol worship. She said, yes, all my gods are worshipped here. My husband was a king and I was a queen. But there is just one more thing, just one more dream left unfulfilled. I want the throne. How many times have you wanted something so bad when God did not deem to be so in your life? Think about it. Many times we plot and we plan what we want in life, what I'm going to accomplish in life, whether God says it is will or not. Because I want what I want when I want it. Like a spoiled brat. I want what I want right now. I'm going to have a fit. I'm going to throw a tantrum. There's a lot of people in the church throw spiritual tantrums when God does not answer their prayers the way they expect him to answer. 
absolutely the one and all. The influence, the authority, and the crown. She wanted everything that God has to offer. She wanted it for herself. In spite of what she had to do to get it. We do the same thing today. We hear God speaking to us. We get selfish. We get callous of heart. We get stubborn. We get resistful. And we want what we want right now, no matter what I have to do to get it. If I have to connive, steal, kill somebody, spiritually or physically, whatever it is I want to do, I want. Just like in relationship. Somebody may want another man's wife so bad they kill the husband. Or they may want the husband so bad they kill the wife. This stuff happens every day in the news. All because of a spirit called jealousy. The Jezebel spirit. It's a jealousy spirit. And that spirit, it controls and manipulates your thought life to where it makes you think you got to have what someone else have right now. That's covetousness. Because you're coveting what somebody else have that's not yours. Even when it comes to promotion on the job, if I have to manipulate and deceive on the job to get a, get to a higher level, different to higher a pay rate, I'm going to do what I can to get the brownie points to get the approval the best way I know how. I'm not going to wait on God. I'm going to do what I want to do right now. Ruling from behind the throne, gave her a degree of satisfaction, but not enough to satisfy her ambition. You hear that? She was already in position as a queen ruling, but that wasn't good enough. <coughs> Excuse me. That wasn't good enough. She wanted more. And we, we do that today. We want more. More of what God has to offer ain't good enough. If I want to do things my way, get what I want the way I want to get it. So she wanted everything that she wanted in the kingdom, the authority, the leadership, the crown. She wanted everything. She had a spirit like a vulture, ready to encircle the weak and moving for the kill. How many people have you known like that in the church? They're like vultures, waiting on a prey to die. Because vultures don't eat nothing alive. They eat stuff that's dead. A vulture is a large bird. I've seen these in Texas. I live in Texas. I used to work for this one office corporation who had shut down, but they still had security in the building. And I was doing security for this one property. And these vultures, three of them, they always come in packs. They came to this building every single day and sat on the lamp pole. And they waited. And they watched for the pigeons, waited for something to die. They waited for any other animal in that area to die because they were circling for a prey to satisfy their desire. You might feel your anointing is dried up. You might feel that God's not answering your prayers. You might feel that what's the use of moving forward when things don't seem to pan out the way I want to do in life. It's like the more I try, the harder things become in my life, the worse things get. So the enemy knows exactly what to do to captivate your attention to make you feel like you're spiritually dead. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. The enemy says, I come in to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's looking to kill your ambition, kill your desires and your passion for the calling on your life so he can get you to a place of death. So you abandon your position because of the mindset is disconnected from the purpose. Ain't that something? Our mindsets get disconnected from the purpose that God has created us for. Every child of God has a purpose. Every child of God has a calling. And God is saying that you need to know what that calling is on your life and know how to get to the place in yourself where you realize, I cannot make it without Christ in my life. We got to get to a place in ourselves where we realize it's so important as a child of God 
to stay focused. I always talk about staying focused because we can get so easily distracted. If you spend more time in the television, listening to radios, and not reading your Bible, you're going to get distracted. Because when God is trying to get your attention and talk to you, there's a distraction to prevent him from being heard in your hearing. You know, last night I had a dream. It was an unusual dream. I was in a house with some people, and I was sitting in a chair. And in this house, a lady came up to me. I'm not sure who the lady was. Came up to me and started telling me all the things that were going wrong in her life. And I immediately stopped. I said, hold up. Let's pray right now. I indulged in the deep realm of the spirit and begin to go, begin to speak in tongues, start speaking in the spirit and begin to pray the word of God over her and decree and declare the word of God to bind every spirit and loose the power of God in her life. I was praying so long in my dream, I woke up, I was still praying in the spirit and still praying and decree and declare because it got in my spirit. When God leads me in consecration, sometimes things like that happens to me. I have an encounter like never before because my attention is now being focused on God and not on myself. Many times we get so distracted by ourselves when God is trying to get our attention, we're blinded by what we choose to do and not hear God's voice. After Leah, God loved her too. He loves all our enemies. But just like her mother, her heart was prone to do evil. She was not willing to turn to the Lord. All she wanted to do was destroy God's kingdom, destroy God's people by killing the kings. Listen to this. She married a weak man just as her mother had done. So she got a man she can control and manipulate. A man who would do anything she commanded him to do as if she was the king. His name was King Jehoram of Judah. Like Ahab, Jehoram had also walked in the way of the kings of Israel. He was the king of Israel. She had easily manipulated him to worship her gods in the same way her mother had convinced Ahab. You see the trend here? The same spirit that was in her mother to control her husband is the same spirit in her right now that's controlling her to control her husband. People today will call that henpeck. Because he ain't got no backbone. I had a pastor used to say a long time. He said, "You got a lot of men in the body of Christ who spaghetti backbone, weak Christian. They ain't got no spine, no no strength, no power to do anything they choose to do without a woman telling them what to do. They can't even get dressed or her telling them what to wear because they have no power of their own to control their own thought life." God have mercy. As evil as her mother, Athaliah used every political platform to introduce Judah to Baal worship. The same way her mother did with the children of Israel. Here she is following the same pattern after her mother to keep the same thing going on with idol worship. She had high aspirations that her gods, my God, my God, that her gods, Baal, Astora, would empower her to seize the crown and the throne. Ain't that something? She chooses to control everything God has for you to do in your life. That's the same spirit today in the church. It controls your future and your destiny. 
somehow I will find a way to sit on my son's place or in my son's place. She thought, just like my mother, I can do a much better job ruling and reigning. So in her mind, she's more powerful, she's more strong, more influential, more controlling than her mother was. These weak men do not understand that it takes sheer determination and tendency to govern a city. Ain't that something? If you don't have no strength to fight, you're going to give up easily in the fight. Even though the Lord promises he will go before you and fight for you. We get to place in ourselves that we give up so quick and revert back to the things that God delivered us from. Listen to this. I could have conquered our enemies long ago if my husband and son had just listened to me have always had a better way. Don't people tell you that today? That I have a better way for you to live? I got a better way for you to earn some income? I got a better way for your marriage to be? I got a better way for you to do this or do that? If you just listen to me. What did the enemy tell Jesus in the, in the wilderness? If you just bow down and worship me, I give you all the kingdom of the world. The problem was he already owned the kingdom. The enemy tried to manipulate him to doubt who he was. He does the same thing today to get you to doubt who you are in Christ Jesus. We need to pay attention and be discerning of these unclean spirits when they present themselves to you. She said, one day I will be able to prove myself to the courts. In other words, prove to the jurisdiction of the people in charge who appoints the king that I'm worthy of the position. After Leah smiled as she began to scheme and fantasize about the day she will rule all Judah. Ain't that something? She thought about it in herself that she can rule the kingdom and she control everything that she wants to control. My God, my God. Ahaziah is now the king of Judah and just as much a fool as his father was. I can handle him too. Ain't that something? She sized him up. She began to think in her mind He's no better than, than his father, so I can control him too. Athenia was murmuring so loudly that one of the palace guards heard her. Your majesty, are you calling for me? The guard remained in the courtyard and waited for her to come to the door. No, be off with you. Can't a person be up early without someone taking notice? My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is really good. This is really good. I pray this is blessing you today. And that is uh, giving you the encouragement through trusting in God's word, his ability. So many times when the enemy comes in, like the words are like a flood. Instead of resisting him, we run from him. When God said he raised a standard against your enemy. So after Leah it was loud to where she distracted one of the guards, and the guard thought she was calling him, and she and she got rude, obnoxious. Then it says, after Leah returned to her room. To, be, to get ready 
She could hardly get dressed due to her anticipation. How many times you been so anxious about something you were about to do? You didn't pray. Didn't, did not seek the Lord's face. But you chose what you want to do when you want to do it. She was going to be with her son later that day and use her influence to make some need, needed changes. And then when she spent time with her son, after Leah, ulterior motive, she had an ulterior motive because she's already fighting for the demise of her son. Later in that day, it was time to meet with the king. After Leah had prepared and rehearsed her list of requests to present to, present to her son, she made her way toward the court and started to open the courtroom door. My lady, my lady, come quickly. The hysterical voice came down the long, narrow archway that led from the courtyard stairs. After Leah hurled towards the voice, what is it? What is it? What is wrong? It's your son, your son. Excuse me. It is the king. He is dead, my lady. He is dead. What? What do you mean? What what has happened to my son? Athelia was now running towards her son's lifeless body. Who? Who did this? She demanded. The same man who destroyed Joram, king of Israel, has now killed Athelia. Or, uh, Azariah, Azariah, king of Judah. He is Jehu, the one the Hebrews called the anointed one. Jehu is the one I mentioned, <clears throat> whom God appointed to be the next king. Jehu, he killed all of Ahab's sons, and even got to this grandchild to kill him too. Jehu, you mean the same Jehu who destroyed my mother and my husband and the grandsons of the house of Ahab? Quick, we must take immediate action before this villain attempts to come here and seize the throne of Judah. Call forth the magistrates and the court officials, summon them immediately, have them meet me in the king's court. Go now, right now. See, God has a plan for your enemy. If you trust in his word, you trust in his leadership, God has a way <clears throat> of bringing your enemy to their demise and causing them to be destroyed according to his prophetic word. Without allowing any time for mourning, she rushed to the king's court and sat on the throne. Now she said to, said to herself, now it's my turn. But first, I need to be sure that no one can overthrow my power. Isn't that what she wanted in the beginning? She wanted to rule. She wanted to be the king. So now her son is dead. The father is dead. The position is open. So now she wants to be the next king. And have waited a lifetime to seize this position. I have only my grandsons standing in my way. I will deal with each of them in due time. Ain't that something? She's talking about killing even the grandkids. Jehu was so powerful. The same Jehu is talking about here in this section of the book is the same one that had killed Ahab's 70 sons in Samaria. Ahab had 70 sons. And Jehu killed them all. Ain't that something? So she's plotting to get this position as king. Even if it means killing her own, own bloodline. So that neither one of them will rise up and take their throne. After Leah's destructive seed of Jezebel, the destructive seed of Jezebel. 
Athaliah was the generational seed of Jezebel and Ahab. You find that in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 18 and verse 26. Some theologians believe she was their biological child and Omri's granddaughter. Others believe she was the daughter of Omri and there, therefore the sister to Ahab. And that Ahab took her and became her father. The Hebrew word daughter used in 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 26 means a daughter in the wide sense. And in the terms of relationship, a branch or company. But whether Athaliah was the daughter or granddaughter, the full revelation of this translation, translation represents a spiritual daughter. A daughter with the character or spirit of Jezebel. If we translate daughter as branch, then we gain more correct understanding of Athaliah as a branch or offshoot from the root of Jezebel. A descendant, what are you trying to say? This would explain the evil atrocities Athaliah committed in murdering every male descendant to, the sur to secure the throne of Judah. She wanted the throne so bad, it didn't matter who she had to kill, they got in her way. Just as Jezebel murdered God's anointed prophet, trying to kill Elijah and abort this mighty prophet's destiny, Athaliah destroyed the destiny of those called to rule and reign on the throne of Judah. That's how powerful she was. She killed anybody who had an inclination to be the next king of Judah. But it would not get in her way. You got people today are not going to let you get in their way. They're not going to let you get ahead of them. They're going to do everything in their power to stop you from rising above them. The reason why they backstab, they gossip, they backbite, they do everything in their power to defame your credibility so they can get to where you're trying to get to quicker than you can. Many times the quick way is not the necessary way because that's a quick way to destruction. Because there's a way that seems right. And the end of a man's life is destruction. The word tells us that. If you try to do things a shortcut way in life, the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. God's looking for patience. He's looking for one who's enduring, one who's standing firm in faith, who's trusting in his word who's not trying to take a shortcut out of life to get what they want in life. So we got to pay attention and understand the same spirit that tried to kill Elijah and abort his destiny behind the spirit of Jezebel is the same spirit today wants you to quit wants you to abort your destiny because it sees where you're going but it's trying to stop you from getting there you might be believing God for a new car, a new house a ministry, whatever it is you're believing God for you're going to always have haters in your life who tries their best to sabotage your pathway because they don't want you to achieve and accomplish what you've been praying for and trusting God to do in your life. So they do everything in their power to distract and deter you from your purpose. Our purpose is attached to our destiny. Our destiny is attached to our calling. And the calling for your life is attached to the Holy Spirit who has the power to fulfill everything in your life. But we miss it because we're busy fighting flesh with flesh and not with the spirit. So many times we find ourselves in altercation with human beings because of something either said or done to you. Instead of rebuking that spirit, shutting it down, walking away from it. You know, I had an incident after last week, Tuesday, I got into it with a crackhead. 
in the building, a female. She was she was in violation, trespassing, and asked to leave the building. And she was sitting in the stairway, and I was going down the steps. And my cousin had called me and was telling me that this person was down there. So I went and asked the person to leave. The person said, "Who are you?" I said, "Well, I live here. You don't belong here. You need to leave." I tell you, when you're teaching the Word of God the way I do, you're going to be tested. The woman turned and spit at me and then launched towards me. I immediately got into defensive mode to defend myself, and we got into a tussle. And when she finally went on left the building, I said, Lord, really? You allow this to come up? to test me and I felt so bad because I got out of character. If you really have the spirit of God living inside of you, if you cuss somebody out, if you say something you shouldn't say that you know you shouldn't be saying, if you do things you shouldn't do, your conscience condemns you. The Holy Spirit says repent and the flesh says no, I'm not going to do it. The flesh says, I'm going to defend myself and do what I want to do at this moment because I don't care what God is saying right now to me. But I thank God I knew when to stop behaving the way I was and repent. It's just plain and simple. I repented for God even though my conscience is condemning me because I felt bad because I had to get into a position like that. We're human beings. you got to remember as a child of God, you are still a human being. Even when tests and trials come in your life and you fail, does not mean you're a quitter. I've known people in ministry who got into altercation with people and they quit the ministry. They quit preaching. They quit singing. They quit doing anything God called them to do in their life all because they became offended. This spirit in Athelie is the same spirit in the mother that operates in the fences. It is the same spirit that looks for a foothold into your mindset. The word tells us, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither your foothold to the devil. Because the enemy knows if I can make you angry, and keep you angry. You're going to bed with your attitude of anger. Never reconciling. Never repenting. Never asking for forgiveness. But you're going to bed with a negative, foul, demonic attitude. And God is saying tonight, we need to pay attention. Get back to fasting and praying. It helps. It helps change your demeanor. It changes your attitude. It changes your lifestyle. It changes the words coming out of your mouth. It changes you when you're not so easily offended to cuss somebody out. Some people say, well, that's my bad habit. I've been doing it for years. I can't break that. Yes, you can. That's a lie for the enemy. Anything that's not born of faith is of the devil. Because faith Call creation of life to flow through you from the word of God. Faith empowers you to keep trusting in the word of God and speak the word in the opportune moments and when it's not, not available. Speak the word. When something happens where it's, it's not planned and it, things happen to you that get you off guard, the word comes to you. God knows how to deal with our hearts. He knows how to deal with that mouth. But we got to be willing to let them deal with it. So you got to seize the moment when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. That's what I'm trying to say. When it's convenient or not convenient, you still have to know how to deal with your adversary and to shut down the voice of the enemy. Stop making excuses. If you got a bad habit, identify it, recognize it, repent of it, Ask God to remove it from your heart. Because the heart is the ground where it's rooted. 
ask God to take it out of your heart so it can get out of your mind. If you never deal with the heart, you never deal with the mind. The mind, the heart, the mouth, the hearing, the sight, everything works together. After he was married, to King Jehoram of Judah and became Judah's only queen in the rule, in the rule that spanned from the 1841 to 8, 8, 841 and 835 BC. In 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through 3, 2 Chronicles chapter 22 and chapter 23, she married a man who had the same characteristics of her father. So we got to really pay attention to what God is doing in this time of our lives. Not only did she follow her mother's footsteps, but choosing and choosing and marry a weak man, but she overthrew the legitimate heir to the throne through manipulation and deception. She knew exactly what to do to fulfill her plot and her schemes and cut off the bloodline. When her husband and son died, after Leah illegally, you hear this? Illegally seized the throne as the absolute power in Judah. Because there was nobody else left to tell her what to do. So she took it upon her own accord to take the king's throne for herself. Then she secured her future by murdering all her male descendants. Guess what? Yes, and her grandsons. All because she wanted power. She destroyed anyone who threatened her power to rule over Judah. She had a hatred for legitimate and godly authority going on to the extreme to destroy all uh, oppositions. Only the daughter of Jezebel could be so vicious and power hungry that she would murder her own grandsons to illegally, Ill illegally seize the throne. The enemy does the same thing in our lives today. He illegally gains access into your thought life when you're not guarded by the word of God. He does what he can to overpower you. If it means even murdering your descendant through sin, He's going to do it to stop the bloodline from turning to God. When you cut off the bloodline of the past that was full of iniquity and sin, a new bloodline begins with Jesus Christ in your life. Your children are to be guided, are to be instructed, are to be driven and led by the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit that they too will become born again. We have to really pray for our children, cover them, guard them. That's why I love the story about Job, how Job, he prayed for his children. He covered them because he knew something would happen to his children and God needed to have repentance for his children, but he repented for them. They weren't evidently serving God. If he offered a sacrifice for them in their place of them, they put to offer the sacrifice. So that lets you know that he had to be the one that God chose to continue to keep the bloodline of the Holy Spirit flowing. We got to pay attention. The enemy doesn't want your children be born again. He doesn't want your descendants to be born again. He wants your whole generation to be wiped out through sin. The reason why so many people are prematurely dying today is because no one has taken the time to really teach them the right way how to live by the word of God. Even though they might have been with the church as a child and grew up in church 
but they never really learn how to submit to the Lord. Because it doesn't matter how much you grow up in church or raised in church, you need to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Not allow the enemy to seize illegitimate authority and rule in your life. Like her mother, she was a murderer and an idolater who illegally seized dominion and authority. Jezebel introduced Israel to idol, to the idol Baal, and later her daughter, Athaliah, brought the same idols into Judah. Just as Jezebel seduced her husband into becoming an idol worshiper, Athaliah followed suit and encouraged hers to do the same. In the nation of Judah, therefore, not only was idol worship manifested, but also the release of the evil connected to the, each idol. The door to extreme oppression was now being opened in the land of Judah. Dear ones, the same happens to us if we tolerate any manifestation of Jezebel and her seed. People become oppressed, depressed, because you have not dealt with the spirit behind the condition. And God is making us aware. To be, on guard, be on guard and be alert. Do not fall suit to idol worship. But recognize it, identify it, discard it, destroy it, burn it up if you have to. Things that you know that are idols in your life. People have tangible idols in their homes, and those things attach to spirits. And those spirits control your life. Because you wonder why every time I come home, there's confusion. Every time I come home, I get a headache. Every time I come home, something always happens negative. It might be because of an artifact that's in your house that's, that's attached to spirits of the unclean world, of the demonic world. You got to recognize what it is. Pray to God to reveal to you what's in your house as an idol. And allow the Holy Spirit to give you the willpower and the strength to destroy it. Because if you don't destroy it, it's going to control your life and control your destiny. Next week, we're going to pick up talking about after Leah's targets, the generation. And I tell you, when you realize any just not doesn't just want you, he wants your generation. It's gonna make you be more aware and more prayerful. To pray for your children and the generation after them to come. To cover them with the word of God and the blood of the Lamb. And ask the Lord to be their strength and their shield and their buckler to protect them. From any attack of the enemy that may come even in the future. And God can do that. That's how powerful he is. Our God can do anything but fail. Amen. So, as usual, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, the word of God tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. You can see the same life tonight. By praying this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, known and unknown, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. And I guarantee that the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that's turned their life over to Jesus Christ. You might have been a backslider and prayed that prayer. Jesus got restored. That means you've never fallen from grace. The word tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God for repentance. Because if we confess our sins, he is faithful, who? God. To forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I encourage you tonight, continue to pray and ask God to show you your heart. 
true within your mindset. Allow the Spirit of God to purge you, to saturate you, to empower you. To walk in your true calling and purpose from this day forward in the kingdom of God as a vessel of righteousness and holiness. Amen. Without holiness, no man can see the Lord. So you've got to practice righteousness and practice walking in holiness every day of your life. So you be encouraged, be enriched, share this, this word with somebody else that you know might need to hear it. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your hearts tonight continually. I pray this helps somebody tonight. And I tell you that when God begins to speak by His Spirit, you will begin to see change in yourself. And folks around you will see the change in you. Because God is calling us out of the dark places of life into his marvelous light that we can be a vessel of light everywhere we go to display his glory in the earth amen so y'all be encouraged until next week you want to sow a seed into the ministry feel free to do so the link is attached to the comment section so you all be blessed may lord watch between me and thee while we absent one from another may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord lift his countenance upon you may the lord give you peace until next week, shalom. God bless you. And again, thank everybody for joining in tonight, too. Thank you.